flush valves. Today I'm going to tell you how I installed flush valves on my EcoSmart electric tankless water heater. Let's jump into it. In one of my earlier videos, I installed a flow regulator on an electric tankless water heater. It worked okay, but I got a few comments that really spurred me into action. First, don't you need flush valves? Second, couldn't you use a ball valve as a flow regulator? And third, why don't you get some better wrenches? Thanks for the viewer comments. In this video, I'll respond to two of those comments, but I'll save the third for a future video. First, why do you need flush valves? The short answer is scale. Mineral deposits or scale can build up on the heating elements inside the water heater and can get inside your shower, your faucets, and your other fixtures. The EcoSmart Troubleshooting Guide suggests flushing about every six to 12 months, depending on the hardness of your water. They suggest using three to four gallons of white food grade vinegar. Unfortunately, I didn't have flush valves installed when I installed my water heater. Fortunately, it's not too difficult to add them after the fact. I purchased this valve kit on Amazon for about 60 bucks. I also had to buy a few more plumbing parts that totaled about 20 to $30. Some of these extra parts would have been unnecessary had I planned ahead a little better. First, you can see that this copper elbow on the hot water pipe runs right into where the hot flush valve would be. So I needed to extend the valve with an extra brass nipple. Second, I needed to install an extra nipple at the bottom of each flush valve. This is because the flush valves have a female connection as does the flexible supply line. So I need a male to male to join those two together. To start, as always, I cut power to all three circuits of the water heater. Next, I cut the water supply to the heater. After that, you can open a hot water faucet in the house, like a bathtub, just to drain out the extra hot water and break the vacuum in the water heater. Then it was time to unhook the flexible hot and cold water supply lines. You'll want a pan or a bucket to catch the water that drains out. Once I removed the hot water line, I also removed the flow restrictor that I installed in my previous video. And in a future video, I'll get into why I don't need that anymore. The flush valves come with a coupler that makes it a little bit easier to install. You start by unscrewing this part from the valve and then installing it to the water heater. This part is bare metal, as is the water heater connection, so you should use some thread sealing plumber's tape between the two threads. Tighten up this part with your nice new wrench. Once you've done that, you can screw the nut on the flush valve to the coupler. This joint is a compression fitting, so you don't need thread tape. Next, because the valve and the supply line are both female connectors, we'll need to add a nipple between them. The top connection is bare metal on metal, so I'll need some more plumber's thread tape. The bottom connection is a compression fitting, so again, no thread tape is needed. I just connect it together and tighten with a wrench or two. The hot side is more complicated. The kit comes with a temperature and pressure relief valve. This can account for cases where you get air bubbles or the water heater gets too hot. If you do things right, I don't think this is strictly necessary on a tankless water heater, but it came with the kit, so I'm installing it anyway. As with some of the other parts, this is another metal to metal connection, so I'm adding even more plumber's tape. The relief valve screws into the side of the flush valve, and I hand tightened it. You need this to end up pointing downwards, so it's not really possible to tighten it much more with a wrench. As mentioned earlier, 
The copper hot water line is in the way of where I want the flush valve to be, so I need to add some pipe between the water heater and the flush valve. I did this with a brass union and a brass three inch nipple. Before I connect these to the heater, I wanna connect them all together. As before, I used plumber's tape when attaching bare metal connections. Once I had my new contraption built, I hooked it up to the heater. You can see now how the valve handles will clear the flexible plumbing line thanks to the three inch nipple that I added. And as with the cold line, I added another nipple at the bottom to connect the female flexible supply line to the female end on the flush valve. I had to do a fair bit of wrangling to get the flexible plumbing line to clear the electrical wiring, so another case where more planning would have helped. Now everything is connected. This is roughly what the finished product looks like. So, all set, right? Not quite. I turned the water back on and found several leaks in my connections. I spent a good part of the rest of the afternoon tightening and reassembling all of these different parts. And finally, I got the leaks closed up to my satisfaction. One lesson here is to try to avoid this complicated setup with so many connections. Try to plan ahead so that you can make as few connections as possible. And consider trying to find compression fittings so that you don't need these metal to metal and plumber's tape connections. If you have some tips or if you can point out how I did this wrong, please sound off down below in the comments. I'm happy to hear it. Once you're confident enough in your connections, let's try these valves out. I'm not an expert on this, so consult your manual, but here's how I did it. To flush the water heater, you can buy a full kit that comes with a pump and hoses and a bucket, but these are actually just washing machine hoses, and so I bought the different parts separately. With your water shut off, and this is an important part, shut off your water if you haven't already, Open the caps on the flush valves and connect the washer hoses. Once you've connected those hoses, close the valve handles on the side of the valves and open the handles on the top. This will prevent cold water from coming into the water heater and prevent the cleaning fluid from going into your plumbing. You want to create a cycle between the water heater, and the bucket of cleaning fluid. To pump the cleaning solution, I used a regular submersible pump. You might recognize this pump from my hot tub draining video. It's the same one. The pump came with a washer hose adapter, so I attached that to the pump and then attached the cold washer hose to the top of it. Fill the bucket with the cleaning solution of your choice and then drop the pump into the bottom of it. You want the hot water hose connected and pointing into the bucket that you don't necessarily need the end of it submerged. You want the fluid to come out of the water heater and recirculate as you run a cleaning cycle. Before you run the pump, make sure your water heater is still disconnected or turned off. You don't want to waste energy heating up the cleaning solution. Once your hoses are in the right place and the valve set correctly, and you've added the cleaning solution of your choice to the bucket, you can plug in the pump and start cleaning. Check your manual. The EcoSmart Troubleshooting Guide 
suggests running the pump for about three to four hours, although that sounds like quite the little Saturday afternoon. And a lot of time to spend without hot water. Once you've finished, however long you run it, you should flush the cleaning solution out of the system. I didn't capture this on video, but to do it, you should keep the power off and keep the washing machine hose attached to the hot side so that the cleaning solution doesn't get flushed into your plumbing system. Being careful to open and close valves in the right order so you don't get soaked, detach the cold hose from the cold side of the flush valve and close off the flush handle. Once you're ready, open the valves on the cold side to let water in from your city or well. You wanna let that water and solution flush either into the bucket or ideally outside or into a drain, somewhere that's safe to dispose of the cleaning solution. Again, check your manuals, but I've seen some suggestions that you let this run for four to five minutes and let 20 to 30 gallons of water run through the system to fully flush out the cleaning solution. Finally, you can get the water heater running again. Before you turn the power on, go ahead and close up all of the flush valves and reconnect it as if you're ready to start. Make sure you open up the supply line into the water heater and open a bathtub or sink to let all of the air bubbles get flushed out of the water heater. Once you've done that, you can close the bathtub or sink valve, go back and turn on the switches for the water heater. So that's how I installed flush valves on this water heater. Some important lessons learned here. First, avoid complicating the plumbing. The less connections you have, the less plumber's tape, the less opportunity for leaks. I hope you got something from this, but let me know if you noticed something I could have done differently and keep coming with those ideas for future videos. On the next video, I'll show how I used the flush valve to set the right flow rate and avoid the need for the flow restrictor. Later, I might even publish a video showing different flow rates of different fixtures in the house to give you an idea how large of a water heater you might need. Make sure you subscribe so you can catch the next ones. Goodbye.